on the scene yeah. The yeah. winning Janine I'm yeah. bringing the facts They know yeah. what I mean nope. Music comparisons Yeah, it's embarrassing Up in the Ford I feel like I'm Harrison Star Back Wars. on the fast track Mighty and Morphin My name's Zach Morphin Feel time. like a gentleman Top of my class A legend I'm feeling like three stacks okay. hey, Word to Aaliyah Taking it back and forth I'm feeling so one in a million I'm Timbo. like Travis McCoy Gym class hero Wanting a billion oh, yeah. Hey, Jay on the holiday put What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Good, what's good? Hey, welcome to the greatest audio musical discussion podcast of all time. I know y'all missed it because we missed it too. Ladies and gentlemen, talk about past the eyes. You know what it is, man. It's your boy, Dwayne, man, your favorite neighborhood mediator, host, you know, Prince of Botch, all that good stuff, man. The guy they call Highlight Real on the side too when he do his thing. But I'm joined by my favorite peoples, man. What's going on, peoples? It's been a minute. It's been a while. <laughs> wow. And I promise y'all, we did not do this on purpose to y'all, okay? I know y'all really was like, yo, where y'all been, bro? Like, no, nah, we, life, things, man, in between. We still keep the consistency for y'all. We just, we just been a little bit everywhere individually. But we here, trust me, we've been discussing it. We knew it was yeah. time to get y'all some new, new, you know what I'm saying? So we continually bringing it to y'all, you know what I mean? You know, COVID tried to get in the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everyday life tried to get in the way, bills, 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 can you pay my telephone bills, can't pay my automobile, tried to get in the way, all that, man. Y'all know, I mean, yeah, y'all saw the reference. Um, <clears throat> that being said, let me just introduce these two fine people. Y'all know my crew. We know the crew. Y'all know the crew, but still, hey, we here. Uh, <clears throat> start with ladies first, because we gentlemen from here. Y'all know her as my one true favorite cousin. Y'all know her as Miss Bougie Thug. Y'all already know her with the swag. She is the classy, but also clatchy. Champion of the world, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking none other than <laughs> Miss Jenny. Not just the city, the world, Craig. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Hi, guys. Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> Props to you. You know what I'm saying? Coming up in her strong, boy. She's coming in. She's fighting like a soldier, y'all. Hence the bait. You see what I'm saying? You see, you see what she did? Soldier. Real You know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> just for y'all, man. Just for y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cousin, how you feeling? Um, I feel blessed. I'm gonna keep it positive. I'm gonna keep it light. I feel good. I'm I'm very <laughs> happy to be here and recording and being able to talk. I started yeah. a little stuffy, but it's fine. We're gonna get through it. It's cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, no hookah today. We just got oh, no, we're smoking tea. hookah because I have a problem. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh oh, not lung congestion. It's more of this. So I felt like as long as my lungs were okay, I could smoke hookah. You know what I mean, come on. So, See, that's dedication. Straight up. That's dedication. I can't be the hookah mommy if I'm not hookahing through. Ooh, you know do we got a new nickname? The hookah uh, mommy? What? <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. I'm going to put that in the intros now. The hookah mommy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I got to remember that one, though. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, so so when she stand next to Drake, it'll be the champagne poppy and the hookah mommy. Hookah mommy, ooh, so yeah, there you go. go. Together. Yeah, they go together. It's, it works. Give me brunch vibes, you know yeah. I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Salad up. <laughs> Add that one to it, y'all, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let me forget that in the intro, okay? Y'all make sure we make that. Okay. Speaking of which. We can't forget my man, you know what I'm saying? Y'all already know my guy, dog. Y'all know my brother from a whole nother brother. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the hardest working man in show business. We call him Clyde Diddy. You already know. And of course, he is the man that don't take no mess. He is the man with all the progress. I'm talking about the man that we also call the pie father himself. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> none other than Mr. OTS Media Co. himself, CEO status, Derek Myers. What's up, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on? What's going on? What up, man? See you rocking the, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, see what you're rocking that, man. You know what I'm saying? Looking oh, good. Yeah. The last time we recorded, I don't think we, we had the sponsor, did we? We did. We had the did sponsor. We? we had the sponsor. Bro, it's been so, it's, I, but. The merch, though. The, time. the merch, yeah. The yeah. merch, though. So y'all yeah, see it. Y'all see, see it. 
Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Speaking of which, y'all know your boy sticking true to his roots. You know what I mean? Y'all know me. I'm always known for rocking my music idol shirts. You know what I'm saying? And trust me when I say I've collected a whole lot more since the last time I saw y'all. So you just never know who I'm going to pop up with today. But I'm repping my guy. You know what I'm saying? Multi to the sun die all day, forever day, forever in a day. You know what I'm saying? King, remember the time. Big crit. all oh, my dog. Talk about a nice dope tour experience, which I'll get y'all later on in the show. But for now, Let's get on into this thing, man. You know, we've been with squad, you know, been a little minute. So I know it's a lot, a whole lot. We've been listening and vibing to y'all. So uh, that being said, what's been in y'all ears? Okay. Um, uh, I feel like I mentioned this last time we spoke. If I did, oh, well, I'm going to say it again. I've been listening to like a lot of house music um, and like the subgenres of house. Um, me and my mans was recently introduced to like a South African subgenre of house called Apiano. So we just been kind of vib- vibing off that. I don't know what they're saying, but it's okay. It's the vibe. <laughs> I have taken a few lyrics and put them in Google Translate. I'm like, yeah, this sounds better in Zulu, but it's fine. Um, so I've been listening to that. Um, West Side Boogie dropped the album, More Black Superheroes. Chef's kiss. I love him a lot. Um, West Side Boogie gives me like thug nigga. I'm sorry, hood nigga that's trying to do the work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it's just little references he puts in there, like um, a girl asking him for the time he's he's born and for those that follow stars and rising moons like you you know what that's about so it's just little references in there i'm like okay he's been talking to somebody and or he's actually doing the work so that's cool and then um of course drake honestly never mind but we can talk about that later sips to eat (laughs) oh boy what a conversation that shall be uh mr Derek, sir Yes, sir. Other than the obvious, you know what I'm saying? The oh so obvious. What has been in your ears? Yeah. Yeah. I always listen to that CEO. Um, (laughs) No, um, I've actually been stuck in 2000s era music for the last, I don't know, maybe like two weeks, two, two, maybe two and a half weeks, actually. Like uh, Jay Holiday. uh, Neo, uh, let's see who else. Uh, a little bit of Sierra. Um, God, who was I listening to this this past week? Oh, Ray J, as y'all see on 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 the uh, the IG story. Um, past Ox IG. Um, I don't know. I I sl- actually listen to Ray J. I slick want to hear some new stuff from him. I, I don't know why, but I want to. I I, I want to hear like what would be different because you remember that that time of Ray J was single Ray J, right? Now this is this is I don't know if they're married anymore, but you know he's got kids, and <laughs> it'd be nice to see like what what will come out of that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, Bring it up. <laughs> whole whole adult. Um, <laughs> But I was looking, I was actually uh, at my parents' house this past weekend uh, for Father's Day, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know why, but we all got into the family room and just started watching music videos on YouTube. Mm. And it took us down this whole rabbit hole. And I'm explaining uh, 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 different genres of music or or artists, rather, um, with like Usher and, and, and his story and my mom didn't realize that you know uh, the whole confessions album was Jermaine Dupree's story and all that stuff so I I'm explaining that stuff to her and you know uh we'll listen to like Justin Timberlake Jay uh, uh Jennifer Jennifer Hudson Beyonce uh it, it was like this whole wormhole of just random neo just like random music videos that we started watching mm-hmm. and I started thinking about I I actually would not mind seeing music videos, at least one or two music videos now shot like that. Because you remember back then, it was like, it was the fish islands. And and for some reason, everybody had this obsession with dancing in the rain. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would like to see someone do a music video like that today. Because I was looking at that, you remember that Burn video? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Back then, the graphics, the visual effects looked amazing. Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking at him like, yo, this looks cheesy as hell, man. Like, this, this looks oh, so yeah. bad. This looks so bad. But I would love to see that style done today in 4K. I, I want to mm. see that. Let, let me, I don't, so I don't know, if, you know, anybody, you know, because I'm not shooting it. But I want to, I want to love to know if, you know, someone would, you know, do a video like that. Because that, you know, like the music in like 2000s, like, the message was a little different. Jamie Foxx, for example, mm -hmm. like, uh, and Chris Brown, like, listen, like, I went through this whole rabbit hole, man. And it's just like, you're seeing everybody's music videos shot differently and edited so weird. And, and just like, I forgot what song it was, but it was this Jamie Foxx uh, track that he did with, with Chris Brown that uh, the music video, I'm sitting there, I'm looking at him like, why the hell would they edit it like that? It's like, it was split. It was the main video in the middle, and there was a, like the split on top and bottom was another video. Mm -hmm. It's like random mm -hmm. scenes happening behind them, and then they bring it to the forefront. It's just like this weird edit. So I don't know what that style is, <laughs> but I would like to see something like that done today. I think movies had a habit of doing that around that time too. That was kind of just a uh, that was a mid two thousands era thing when it yeah. comes to shoot style. It was just weird, you know. And then like the, the fashion back then, I was, I'm looking at all these videos and I'm like, bro, what were we on? What were we mm -hmm. thinking? <laughs> Good old FUBU jerseys, man. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, I saw a picture of myself from that time. I'm like, yo, like, this is just, I, I'm so glad <laughs> we like, progressed. We a lot of this, like, I want to look unkept, but, but like I tried at the same time with like the oversized unbuttoned Yes. Downs, fitted caps, uh, forces. Even with yes. girls, like the weird pleated skirts with like the Chinese sandals. It was really, it was a spooky time. Fashion. It was a very random, weird time. Yeah. I, I, I don't get it. Like, I, oh, um, Tyrese saw his music video. Um, I forgot the name of the song, but how you gonna act like that? I'm not sure if that's the name of the song, but um, mm. like his. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, but like the way he was dressed in there, I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, that just brought me automatically right back to Too Fast, Too Furious. I'm just like, this but is Tyrese that has a belly button tattoo. The fact that that man has that is just yeah, wild. yeah. See I saw it there, yeah, yeah. True that. Well, Batista has one too. Who? Oh, Dave Batista. Dave Batista. He's Batista. the uh, he's Drax. Yeah, from Marvel. You you. Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh no no no. Okay, yes, we're here. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> those are the only two guys that I I can recall of that have those type of type of tattoos, right? But yeah, Batista could almost get away with it. He was a wrestler. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, Tyrese. <laughs> that was that's just random because I was in the video. I was looking at his tattoos on his arm. Like those are just random tattoos. And like everybody just like a lot of guys had those random uh, uh tribal tattoos and mm -hmm. Chinese symbols. It's just mm -hmm. it was that, that whole time period, the 2000s. I love the 2000s, amazing time period, right? Mm -hmm. I almost want to do a, 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 a comparison of the 90s versus 2000s uh music uh one day because or at least to even do a fans battle on that, maybe we could do that. Um but that would be a hit. That's a bit of foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. Just letting you know, man. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> but and and it's like the R and B during during that time. Um, mm -hmm. that's the last time that R and B was like top notch. Mm -hmm. Right, like '90s R and B is that's the golden era, but mm -hmm. the '2000s was like not too far from it. But then I started going back and listening to a lot of the, you know, rap uh, music or hip hop music as well. And it's just like, that time period was just amazing. Like mm -hmm. everybody was just saying wild stuff. <laughs> the 2000s music aged well. I feel like 90s music, we're about to get off in, into a tangent and I'll do that. I'm sorry. No, it's so good. Like 90s R&B and like 90s hip hop is like, 
timeless. Like we can listen to a lot of that stuff still. And it's like, oh, this hits and I feel it even differently now because I'm grown and I've actually have gone through heartbreak. But a lot of the 2000s stuff, like it's a bop because it's nostalgic. So you're like, this beat didn't age very well. Like right. it's, it's, it's very much of the times. Oh, for sure. For sure. I think, I think a lot of that for me is that's when R&B and hip hop started to become more like mainstream poppy. Mm hmm. So it, it it doesn't it just doesn't age well. Yeah, yeah. See, that's that's very interesting too because I was actually listening to uh, <laughs> Candy Shop came on today and I was just having the show. <laughs> There's no reason why I knew Candy. <laughs> and I swear, in sixth grade, like I swear, day. in my mind, I sat here and I really said to myself, <laughs> "Why is it that a lot of Fifty songs is <laughs> hit ones?" Outside of in the club, why do not why does it not seem like all this man's songs did not age well at all? Yeah. Now, now I mean I'm like I'm living in candy shop and I'm just like dang, like <laughs> I'm like this sounds yeah. so corny right now. Like I'm really yeah. listening to it and I'm just like the beat doesn't age well, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just like I was sitting there because I was watching the origins of hip hop thing my aunt had on and like it was one episode on like Ja Rule. And so I'm just watching like how they were talking about his origin and everything and like how like right when 50 came and how he was like attacking him and they were like, yeah, and it's funny because he ends up attacking and bullying the guy, but then he turns around and does the same thing he did. And I was like, well, yeah, we knew that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah. the difference is Ja's stuff ages well because it was original and authentic. His yeah. doesn't. I was like, I'm looking at chaos. I'm like, Candy Shop is not doing it for me right now. But I was just sitting there like, wow, this is weird how at the time frame of when that was out, everybody in my mama was loving the song. I'm just like, what the, the heck? It's the beat. The production was 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 good. But if you turn the production off, you turn if you don't, if you listen to them without instrumentals. The lyrics just don't make sense sometimes. Yeah. And even like, it's just, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, wanna, I, but I do want to piggyback to just the fact that you and the family were in the living room watching music videos. I miss that era. Like, I miss 106 and Park. I miss yeah. PRL. I miss getting up for school and having the the videos playing while I'm getting ready, even on like yeah. VH1, because that put me on to, that's really how I know a lot of my like Par Paramore stuff and, mm -hmm. and, and all yeah. that rock and roll, because now that we have these streaming services, it's very easy to just get locked into what you're used to listening to, and like you're not really mm -hmm. put on to anything new. Mm -hmm. And I don't listen to radio anymore either, so I don't know a lot of the pop music unless it's on TikTok. I'm like, oh, okay, I might go look that up. But other than mm -hmm. that, I'm very much just stuck on what I choose to listen to versus being forced to be introduced to things. This might Fair. be an off-air conversation, what I'm thinking about, because you just made me think about something totally different with that. Um, but I do remember sitting and and and... I didn't okay. I probably told y'all this already, but I didn't grow up with like cable TV. It was just basic cable, right? So I would go to mm -hmm. other people's houses and watch a lot of that stuff and and you know just be engrossed in it for hours just watching music videos. And um it's a, it's something that I like cuz we might actually get into this later cuz I was I was asking um I was asking someone about uh, album covers, right? Like back then, it seemed like everything worked together. The album cover, the music videos, the, the, the track list, it seemed like everything worked together. And now there seems to not be too much thought that goes into a lot of that stuff. Like could could a show showcasing mu music videos work in today's uh, day and age? Could that actually work? Great question. I want to say yes and no. It, it the no 
people put out content too quickly now, right? And, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's where music videos went down because there's no like storyline, there's no video vixens anymore for that's real. Right. You're you're not chasing a I'm sorry, not chasing because that sounds aggressive, but you're not dancing after a girl down the the um, street anymore. It, it almost takes you having like a major budget to put out quality videos like um weekend when he did uh what was that last song the after hours mm -hmm. the fact that he had music videos come out it, it was like a movie like each music video was in sequence to this overall story mm -hmm. but weekend has stupid money and like a stupid budget so he's able to put out those kind of videos we're used to seeing mm -hmm. back in the day now it's just let's just get a camera and 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 we're all outside like this you know what yeah. I mean? and I'm and I'm really over it. Yeah, because I I don't think today's artists, uh, at least the younger ones, um, I don't think they really care about that too much. Because if you listen to their music, they don't have stories. Mm -hmm. That's and that's what I think. That's pro the main reason why I can't really get into their music is because there's nothing to go off on. I mean, mm -hmm. certain music you want to hear just for the vibe or whatever. I get it. And, you know, it's not that's not lost on me but for the most part when i listen to something i like to hear something that grabs my attention whether it's a li uh, lyricism storytelling something unique that makes that sets them apart because now a lot of these artists just sound alike right mm -hmm. and now i know i sound like the old man and mm -hmm. i'm fine with that but that that that's that's what i like i think that's like sitting down and watching those music videos this weekend I think that's what really kind of like made me like really think about that right because i all these videos i've seen before but you kind of like move on from that stuff and you go into the newer stuff and you know sometimes you don't even think about the music videos you think about you still listen to the music you just don't watch the music videos anymore and i don't that just made me miss that time when when that was something that was a part of our culture, like where we where we really cared about the music videos. I mean, you still see some guys like Kendrick Lamar or uh, uh, J. Cole, like they'll come out with videos and, and there's there's something to the video, right? There's a message mm -hmm. in the video. Um, but I think that's because they have a message in their music. If you don't have a message in your music, you're just going out, showing videos of you, whether you're smoking, drinking, partying, whatever. And it's just, it's just the scene. Like you really don't care about what was really, you know, being told. So I don't know. I, don't, I would love to see that era come back though, where music videos were the Another forefront. Thing. Tiana Taylor being a dot, being like a di director now, do you think what she's trying to do with music videos is trying to like kind of get back to that. I, I do feel like the things where I see, uh, uh, what she say, this is a ties, a spike T joint, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I do feel like she's trying to bring it back to where videos have a storyline. Cause like, she's very much like nineties R and B. Yeah. She, she's an artist. Yeah. So. She's an artist. Yeah. I, I would love to see that happen. I know I saw a video that that had her name on it uh, that she directed, and I forgot what it was. Um, but I didn't realize how that was the the path she was going down. So she she's really she's just directing music videos, or she's like directing like movies and, as well. She's been doing a lot of music videos. Most recently, she did a uh, Coco from a uh, from Bel Air. Oh yes, yeah, Coco yes, Jones, so, yeah. yeah, Coco Jones. She she just did her video, but she's been doing a lot of people's music videos as of late so i okay. think she's kind of getting into that realm because <clears throat> for, remember for a moment there she said that she wasn't going to be singing anymore mm -hmm. or she she wasn't going to be putting out music like that anymore so I yeah think she's doing more of the behind the scenes stuff now yeah That's see it's cool. uh it's funny too because uh i'm glad you mentioned coco jones because uh i don't know if y'all like when you pump gas gas station how they have these little screens now where they just play stuff while you pump the gas. So like it is like a little music video countdown. So that it's funny because like they still exist, yet as you mentioned guys, like culturally they don't seem to uh hit the same as they once did for our era. So like 
Coco Jones actually got number one on that countdown of like a top five of top music videos today and right now. Uh, so that's actually kind of funny that Tiana Taylor actually did direct that video, which is sitting at number one. So if this keeps up, she might can bring back a, a, a era that you know, many people are missing. I, I, I hope it does because um, it's not something that I ever saw being one of those things that we would just never have a part of. Like it, I kind of, I think we all took for granted that this is where we were growing up in music, the nineties and two thousands was that's, that's how it was going to be. Right. And, and, and it's not. So I, I would love to see that. I would love to see that come back. If she can, if she can push it, I think it mainly depends on, you know, how many artists are going to her to do videos, you know, if if she's able to get a, a roster of 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 artists that that you know can make a, a real good impact, it doesn't seem like it'd be too far fetched. But you also have to have a story to tell, and a lot of these younger artists don't have stories to tell. They just want. They just. I saw some guy. I was on on Instagram the other day, and it was just this dude that was uh just talking like he he was really just rhyming gibberish over a beat like you remember that kid on uh wild thornberries huh oh about it, sufiana had has said something about it do you know who sufiana is okay uh, never mind <laughs> i have no clue what is. <laughs> never mind <laughs> oh <laughs> but he sounded like that little boy off the wild thornberries mm -hmm. just on a beat mm -hmm. you know oh, and yeah. So I don't know how you do a music video to that. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, like I really, I, I don't know. But I would love to see that come back. That would be a great time. That would be a great time, for real, for real. I love it. I love it, man. Yeah, man. Shout out uh, to the music video era that we love and miss oh so much. Um, quick entertainment thought, as it just hit my mind. It was two notes to actually bring up to you guys as I just thought about it. Uh, any of you guys thoughts on this uh, so-called uh, beef going on between Brandy and Jack Harlow? Oh, because he said that he didn't know Brandy was Ray J's sister or something, and then she dropped the diss record or a diss song. I, I, I didn't hear the diss song. I'm, I heard a snippet. I'm not, I'm not entertaining that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not because in, in all retrospect like Jack Harlow is not really our generation it's just like we have to remember a lot of these newer artists and these younger kids like they don't they're not gonna things that are like the facts for us they're not going to know like even when I talk to my sister we're we're eight years apart we grew up in the same house and there's just certain things she's clueless about bro Mm. like just no idea and i'm like are you so like how do you not know that but i have to remember that's a whole different generation and she has facts and i'm like who what yeah who is this? what happened you know this is true I, I i i try to grant them grace um i think the only argument that made sense to me with the brandy versus jack carlo thing is like if if you're going to be a part of the culture, there are just certain things you should know. But I don't know if Brandy being Ray J's sister is like a, is something you just have to know. Like, I'm not sure if it's like that important of a fact in the culture, in, in the grand scheme of the culture. Yeah. I, 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 Jack, Jack, Jack is a kid. He's just a he's a he's a he's a kid with a beard, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So like, <laughs> I when I saw that, I really didn't put too much into it either, because I don't, whatever. Brandy is yeah. in her forties, Jack is just getting into his twenties. I, I really that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what else to say to that. It's just he didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know. Now you know, but you can't. Again, if you're going to, I don't really listen to much of his music either, but if you're going to 
try and be a part of this culture, you better study it. You better study it. <sighs> sure enough there. That's all I mean, that is. That is, a, that is a good point to make. And yet in retrospect, I mean, you know, why is that even a big deal to somebody? You know, like, Brandy, come on. We love you. We know what you are. We know who you are. Yeah. I One will person say, though, is, if she gets a ghostwriter to write her raps, she could flow a little bit. She, the snippet that I heard, I mean, mm-hmm. it didn't sound like it was like that, like that was anything spectacular. But if she got a, 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 a ghostwriter to write her raps, then you'll get brand new, baby. You're going to get brand new resurrected, just like what you got on that Timberland album. <laughs> Meet in the middle, baby. We'll Can you get that? I would, I would. I wouldn't mind hearing it. I wouldn't mind hearing it. Hey, you know, Queens in full effect, ladies and gentlemen. Queens in full I don't effect. Want to her she, I, I don't, don't either. Her. I don't either. But it'd be interesting. To, just, just one track. Just one track. Because that diss track shouldn't have been. That shouldn't have been it. So kind of like when, when, when Monica rapped on so so gone like you need a that for her just 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 do something like that i don't need i don't i don't want a rap album from her no but one just one single single track who knows <laughs> ladies and gentlemen brand new is one and done i repeat brand new is one and done <laughs> who knows <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other note I leave on you guys before we go to break is to also mention uh, rest in peace to a local Atlanta rapper and artist, Trouble, uh, who also uh, has been making a lot of buzz since his passing. Uh, very similar to that of um, how young Dolph's passing was back in Memphis. It's, uh, you know, been seeing on the news uh, from family, friends, even when they had his funeral. Uh, just the things that he did and how he impacted the local Atlanta community and uh, just how many people here in Atlanta were devastated from his passing. Now, I admit, uh, like much like a lot of us probably here, did not know of trouble in his music, but from what I understand and what I've heard about him has uh, definitely, definitely been a, a cultural impact and definitely is severely missed. Uh, so I just say anything you guys want to know as far as how this subject just continues to showcase itself with rapper after rapper passing away at ages before we could even see. I mean, at this point, we're living longer than a lot of rappers out here right now. That's wild. That's wild. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know his music. I didn't know who he was until they announced his, his passing. So I can't speak on on his on his. Uh, on his catalog but i will say that i think that it makes sense for for artists that are coming out to pick something else to to rap about like one if you weren't a part of that life there's no need to really get into it right no need to talk about it you don't know what you're talking about i'm not it doesn't make i i can't i can't talk about selling crack I, I have been around it like but i've never i've never i've never seen it like you know i mean i've never partaken in anything like that but i've seen it so i'm not i don't know anything about it like that though to to talk about it <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh-huh. so if you don't if you don't know about it there's no reason for you to get into it too um there's other stuff to talk about there's just other things to talk about you can talk about your struggle you don't have but you don't have to talk about you don't have to make something up if it's not if it's not your story there's no need to do it you know so i but this i'm assuming we're just gonna we're, we're gonna get to a a point where again i don't know his music so i can't i'm not speaking about him specifically but overall with a lot of the artists that have been getting killed in the last couple of years they're 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 topic of choice has been more so street right so i'm assuming we we are we will see some artists kind of move away from that i mean this this is this is this is getting old this this is this is getting old how many have died since the mid 90s like this 
How many rap artists have died since the mid '90s like this? No, I can think of most of the ones from our era are still very much alive outside of IE, Biggie, and Tupac. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like they, it's almost it. It feels like that's that's where where it jumped off, and then we started, you know, little by little. You whether they were bigger or small or small artists, you were incrementally seeing that over time, right? It's just mm-hmm. I don't I don't think it's worth it. Hopefully we can move past it. It just sucks because the very thing that we love a trouble for and just being like authentic and like if that's really what you were about, like that's what you're about, even when they move away from <clears throat> necessarily partaking into the street shit and, and, and they are trying to be more positive and give back, et cetera, the streets are gonna let them like leave that 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 part of their life yeah and it just sucks like like they don't they don't even have enough time to really elevate and and be able to separate themselves before they tragically lose their demise yeah it's sad very definitely um Thoughts and prayers uh, to the family and loved ones of Trouble locally that are still in greetings of uh, Trouble's passing. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into our main topic. But before we do so. What is in your ears, Dwayne? Oh. (laughs) (laughs) No matter how many tangents we go off into, like we still care. What is it? Ah, you got me because of just when I was trying to see if she was paying attention, she caught me red handed. I might add, caught me red handed. Oh boy. Uh, so you know what? Um, I've been definitely listening to a legend that I'm wondering when he'll ever get some type of versus or something of that nature. But I listened to my boy Shaggy, man, who was like, wow. Man, I had a big, big uh, shaggy phase while I was listening to a lot of his stuff, man. Um, went back and uh, kind of like Derek was in my um, throwback bag a lot, you know, found myself listening to early 20, well, 2009, 2008, Wiz Khalifa, you know, this plain superstar, you know, uh, the thrill, Cushion OJ, you know, just, yeah. It was Khalifa we knew before he got mainstream. So, you know, found myself on that phase a little bit. Uh, found myself listening to a little bit of Snoop too, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, old school Snoop a little bit, like mid 2000s Snoop, I should say. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite Snoops, I'd say, definitely. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was like you got Snoop Doggy Dog, Big Boss Dog, you know, so I, I'd say I was listening to Big Boss Dog era Snoop. So, you know, yeah. And then you got Snoop, Snoop Lion. Lion. Yeah, I was gonna say Snoop Lion. I think you know only the only snow, the only song I know Snoop Lion of is a song he did with Eddie Murphy called Red Light. So that was uh yeah, yeah that was very interesting. That's the Snoop Lion I, song I can give you. I can't give you any other ones after that. But uh, oh, Snoop uh, is hilarious, man. He is, man. That guy. All these eras, you gotta love it. Um trying to see if there was anyone else majorly that I found myself listening to. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. Somebody from my... Oh, I found myself listening to a little bit of uh, Whitney Houston, too. Believe oh, wow. Not. Yeah, you know. That was my girl, man. That was like, yeah. I was definitely uh, big on Whitney. And then, of course, you know, uh, prepped up for a big, 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 big tour. You know, big moment. So I found myself listening to Heavy Big Crit, of course. You know, I mean, that was kind of the obvious. You know, just went down my whole catalog. So every version, prepping up for what was an amazing time that we will speak about later. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get ready to give you guys a quick break from our sponsors. So don't you go nowhere as we come right back and we get into a really deep subject. Oh, honestly, never mind. Be right back. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Dwayne from Pastor Ox and Life's a Botch Podcast. I'm coming to you with a real dope advertisement if you got a moment. Can we do that? Peep this. 
Yo, you tired of that uncomfortable feeling with your undergarments? You, you know what I'm talking about. Like, literally having to adjust so it gets real comfortable in between the, you know, the real safe space. Or maybe just wedgies from it just going underneath, you know what I mean? All that, all that. Let's keep it in 100. Y'all know how I'm feeling. Y'all know how that feeling goes. Well, I want to introduce to you the ultimate solution coming from the number one premium and fit athletic wear just for you. I'm talking about none other than Champ Number One Boxers. Champ Number One Boxers is a black owned underwear brand, okay? They literally specify in giving you the most top notch, high quality, premium, adjustable, and fittable, and totally comfortable undergarment wear that is just for you. Not only is it something that you can wear, feel good in, feel confident in, and love, but it's also high quality, feels good, and on, most importantly, it is definitely fashionable, okay? Comes in a different, wide variety of so many different styles and themes to these undergarments. Something to make you look good, feel good, and swag real good in the process, all right? So, again, did I, did I get to mention that this is also a black-owned brand? It's a black-owned brand, y'all, so if nothing else, definitely go support that 100%. So, what I want to do is I want to tell you, Head on over to OTS Media Co. on all social platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. If you go over, you click the link in the bios, it'll take you straight to the Champ Number One Boxers website. You can check out all their styles, you can check out their bundle deals, you can check out why this brand exists, what it's all about, and trust me when I say you do not want to miss out on the types of opportunities going on right now on the site. Champ Number One Boxers. Make sure you do it for the champ in your life if you ain't already doing it for yourself, champ, all right? Champ number one boxers, make sure you go cop those, all right? All right. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you so much for our sponsors everywhere for this very, very dope episode. Champ boxers, number one. Make sure you get it for the champ in your life. Y'all know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. But that being said, we are back with Pastor Ox, and we are back with the interesting, interesting, interesting conversation that is going to be laid before you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about, honestly, never mind from Drake, but more specifically, with this recent drop that dropped this past Friday, um, at midnight specifically, um, Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to just get into the fact of where, what do we think about this album and where does this even rank amongst Drake's category of albums to date? I mean, he's been doing the game pretty strong so far, man. 2022, going since like 2008, arguably 2007, if you want to go back to the replacement girl days. However far you want to go back with Mr. Uh, Aubrey Gresham, a.k.a. Drake. Uh, hey, see, there you go. Sorry, I botched. That's what I do. But uh, you know, guys. That being said, um, honestly, never mind. Where are we here? I love it. I think it's great. And I'll I'll just start there. I I love it. What do you guys think about it? No, oh, please continue. <laughs> I'm gonna go into why I love it. Yeah. Um, okay, so I love it because I think it's perfect for the um, summer. I mm. think it's so refreshing to get an album that I can just like dance to. I can just groove to. Like, I don't have to think too hard. It's not unpacking traumas. I don't have to think about sad shit. I don't have to pretend that, not pretend, well, yeah, I don't have to pretend like I am on some like street shit. Like, it's just, a, it's, it just feels nice. And I just think that it just so conveniently dropped right when I started like really getting into the house bag. Um, and it's just, it's just nice. I think the same reason that people were fussing about, well, let's go here. When Drake dropped Certified Lover Boy at the same time as Donda, and there was that versus of which album was better. One of my critiques, and I know a lot of people's critique was, 
Dre's gonna give you a good album. It's gonna sound good, but it's low key predictable. Like he has the same kind of format. He's gonna sing a little bit on it, but it's gonna pretty much be predictable and sound the same. When he drops an album that's completely left field, completely different, it's a it's a dance album. Everybody's mad, like, what is this bullshit? And it's terrible. And how da, 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 da. the same thing you critiqued him for and asked him to do differently, he did, and like we're still mad. And I'm wondering if somebody else put out this album, would would it be judged as would it be judged as harshly as it is being judged because it's Drake? Your point. Um I think it depends on who that person is. Okay. Because if you have this hype behind you, right? You know with the Drake album, you're going to get a mixture of rap and singing. This is the reason why, and I I, I have nothing but respect for Drake, right? His, a lot of his fans annoy the hell out of me, but I have nothing but respect for Drake. My problem with him is how he's categorized because there's a lot of people that and i said this on fans you know but a lot of people probably don't even watch that show so i i, I drake is categorized as a rapper he's not a rapper that's not his fault that he's categorized as that though i i'm a, yeah that's true but he's being treated and viewed and looked at like a rapper. He's not a rapper. He's an artist that can rap. Mm-hmm. It's like plain and simple. And I think the 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 vitriol that came with this this album um, is the fact that one is a surprise album, right? So when you when you have a, when you drop a surprise album, you think, oh, that's supposed to be that's going to be fire, right? Because we like no one knew what this was about. Um, I was skeptical on it because I saw the album cover. Like he allowed his uh, his son to create it, and I was like, okay, this is I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling this. And listen to the album. And one of the biggest things that I like Drake is known for is his intros. Like those intros are usually fire, right? I'm sitting here just kind of like, oh my God, bro. <laughs> and it set the mood for that for me because I'm used to Drake coming in like with fire. You know, yeah, you have s- some tracks that are singing where you're singing, but you're rapping. And the fact that this whole album is singing, that's cool. But you got to set the expectations for that. Like, you're not you're not you, you drop this album people are thinking they're going to get summer captions they think they're going to get something that's going to be uh you know uh, uh uh something you just put on repeat or whatever if you know because you're a drake fan and a lot of people didn't get that with this because this is a different lane that he's operating in and that's fine but you got to set that expectation when you drop an album like I'm not, I don't expect Beyonce to, to drop a surprise album and then I go to play it and she's, she's singing uh, country music. You see what I'm saying? Like that, that's, that's how that came across. You had this level of expectation for him. He come, you hit play and it's, <laughs> it's like, what? Everything you said is like, he, okay. So for one, and we've said this before, as a consumer, as a listener, as a fan of somebody, mm-hmm. stop going into a project with expectation. Like, let's start there because sure. you're not going to, if they're doing what they're supposed to do, I would mm-hmm. like to it to not be like the previous project. So let's not go right. into it with expectations. A lot of the times, like our letdown is because we're placing too too high of an expectation on the artist whether it's like I just want to make music regardless of what you think I should be doing mm-hmm. or what you feel like I should be doing this is what I felt right mm-hmm. so that's one for two there's captions bro there there's like I've I've already seen it also let's talk about what 
what state of mind were we in or a lot of us in listening to honestly never mind when it dropped at midnight or yeah. listening to it at 1 a.m or 2 a.m if yeah. i'm in bed cozy maybe honestly never mind is not something that i'm going to be like yeah let, like this is something i can listen to in bed mm -hmm. but saturday morning beautiful day we at the pool we at the beach you know what i mean i'm 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 already listening to like vibey dance songs and like i throw that in the mix chef chef's kiss i like, agree with that it it works for what it's supposed to work for i agree with that you know i agree with that but that's what i'm saying like i think that and i agree maybe we we uh, we sh as consumers shouldn't have shouldn't expect like shouldn't put artists in a box mm -hmm. i put it like that we shouldn't put artists in a box i agree with that but i go to specific artists for specific things right for j cole i know i'm getting lyricism in a story kendrick i know i'm getting lyricism and a story and, and, and however that's that's done i'm cool with it right with drake <laughs> But I expect singing. Say, I expect singing. Say with with Drake and Cole, as talented as they are, mm. don't you feel like they're a little less versatile than what a, a Drake is? Because you do go to them expecting one particular thing, not trying to put them into a box, but even if they have new pr production or whatever, this is still clearly clearly j cole's lane this is still clearly a kendrick's lane mm -hmm. i feel like drake can kind of step out of that a little bit more i feel like he can because of the fact that he has this machine behind him and he 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 spits out albums almost every year if i'm not mistaken or every other year Dr uh, j cole and kendrick don't spit music out like that they they, they don't put albums out like like that consistent because they they have a different goal with their with their projects right big sean's the same way um drake is more commercialized so i think because he's more commercialized he has more versatility with with his work to do other things because with his previous albums he has set that expectation of rap and singing like you know you're going to get a split right so that's not that's not the 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 bad side of it you know I don't, I don't have a problem with him singing personally i would love to have a drake rap album i would love to hear a rap album like complete rap i don't want to hear singing on his stuff for one album you have said this before i i am i will say that to this man is either uh, uh retired or dead I was I, like that. I want to see, just give me one album where you're just doing nothing but complete rap, right? Because he's in a space where he is, he has set himself up to be a rapper, viewed as a rapper, whether he wants to be that or not. He has put himself in a, pos in a position where he has, he wants to be viewed as a rapper. Okay. Now, does he have the versatility of, of singing? Yes. But when you drop an album, surprise, a surprise album like that, we're expect what were you expecting with this album before you listened to it? Honestly, nothing. I didn't know what to expect. Honestly, I, I, I didn't. Only because I didn't really like Scorpion, mm -hmm. to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. Certified Lover Boy, it aged on me because I was so team Donda. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was so like, Donda's better because it was totally different and and like it wasn't like anything we've heard before. Da, 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 da. But Certified Lover Boy did grow on me, but I didn't know what to expect from it, to be completely honest. I expected that split, rap and singing. That's what I expect with Drake because, and however it looks for him, whether it's rap, 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 singing 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 or rap sing like whether he does it alternating or he just does one half one thing one half the other 
I like it, it's fine. However, he however he does it, I expected rapping to be a part of this album, and the fact that the last track was that just that it, it, it threw the whole album off. Honestly, that last track threw the whole album off because of the fact that if you're going to rap, one, why is it at the end of the album? Because he had to give y'all one. He was like, I know that they gonna need one. That could have just been a single. <laughs> Two, it's not concise. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't flow with the album. In my opinion, it just doesn't flow. So, you know, I, I, I was confused. I was confused. Now you're asking about the mindset you were listening to the music, to this album. I was listening to this album right after my Celtics lost the finals. Okay. I was expecting you're not in a celebratory mood at all. You're not trying to dance. No, I'm not trying to dance. No, I want to, <laughs> I want to, I want my mind taken off of this loss. <laughs> so I'm sitting here and I'm listening to this and I'm like, all right. Yeah. I'm sitting here watching the, the warriors celebrate and then on our floor, my, by the way, and I, I, I want to, I want to watch, I want to listen to something that's just going to make me forget about that. And so I'm listening, I put the album on, I'm listening, I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. By the third track, I was done. I was like, this is what we're gonna get. This, this, this is all this is gonna be. I pushed through, but that was the longest hour of music that I've had in a very long time, long time. Um, that breaks my heart. I, I just, I know it has its place. So I'm not trashing it in that sense. But in terms of what we have, we have, come to know drake to do that's what i was expecting mm -hmm. that's all that's all don't don't, don't give me a throwaway track <laughs> don't don't do that don't do that because i thought clb was really i thought that i thought certified little boy brought it back to where he was before right like and i told you guys this before but to me drake has not dropped a a, a a really really like a great project since 2015 more of you more life views and scorpion to me were just like they had nice cuts on them but as a project they weren't good they they, they just weren't good to me um so to go to certified lover boy i'm like oh back to this put me back into the mind frame of nothing was the same take care like that that time frame you know and not to say you can't grow as an artist but that brought me back to what made me like Drake. And, 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 and this, this was like, okay, he's picking up where he left off with 2015. Cool. I can get with this. You go from that to, <laughs> to this, it's just like, come on, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> What's going on here? So. <laughs> wow. This is, this is dope. This is dope discussion. I, I'm really enjoying the positive negative effect here between you two. This is, this is very, very dope perspectives uh, as a middleman here to listen to both of y'all kind of, you know, play the sides of the field here. You yeah. know, yeah. This, this is really <laughs> cool. You know, you both have kind of persuaded in different ways. And I respect what I'm hearing right now from both points of view. Uh, hmm. To answer Janine's question, mind state. Hmm. Now let's see what happened that day. That was a very busy day. That was a busy day. Meanwhile, watching Derek Celtics, of course, yes, there was that. There was a lot going on that day. So let me see what, what time was it? Probably about, yeah, as Janine would say, probably about one, two in the morning. The driving and driving, and you're like, oh, wait, that's right. Drake dropped an album. Let me give this a listen. Hmm. All right. As Derek mentioned, intros, usually you get some type of fire intro. Cross that off the list because you didn't get that. Okay. My gripe is that every song. As you're driving, it's late. And, you know, normally mellow vibes are my thing when it's late, right? I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. I don't mind so much singing or whatever. Blah, cool. 
But when you expect something hype, when you expect some form of rap somewhere, it was like, okay. Uh, after a while, every song started to sound the same to me. Skip. Thank you. Every song started to sound okay. Skip. Literally, every song sounded the same to me. Up until I got to about, what was it, track six, seven, sticky, sticky thing. Yeah. That came, and then I was like, finally, a little something upbeat with some type of rap to it. I can get with this one. All right, this is cool. Comes a little switch up in the beats. I, right, you know, right, not quite what I expected, but I'm, I'm, I'm vibing to this one. And then same, 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 same. It got to the point where it was just like, enough's enough, man. Like, I almost was about to turn this out more. And then I finally just about get into my neighborhood when all of a sudden, I hear this Jimmy Cook song. Yeah. And I say, well, God dang. <laughs> See, it made my dog whole ring light fall out. Because I'm like, well, God dang. What was this? <laughs> I was waiting for this the whole entire time, people. Where did yeah. this go? What was I missing, right? And then I'm like, next thing I'm thinking, OK, so is the tempo about to change now? We're finally about to get the album's over. Yeah. Time officially wasted at 3 a.m. in the morning. All right. So then I say to myself, all right, after getting all this flack, you know, people like Miss Janine here, the Queen of Classic, and, you know, Darren, and all these other people, like my boy Speck, you know, saying this is back. In my mind, I said, okay, I'm going to give this another this. I'm a little more awake. It's more daylight, you know, it's daylight out there. Okay, let's get us another one. Sounds the same. <laughs> Sounds the same. <laughs> okay, I get the house effect here that you guys are talking about. Still sounds the same. <laughs> Stickity, sticky, still like it. Cool, still rock with this track. Sounds the same, <laughs> sounds the same, <laughs> sounds the same. And <laughs> Jimmy Cooks, literally only two songs from this entire project stuck with me. And I'm just like, well, I can rock with these two, but the rest of this, and I like House. I like EDM, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I can get with that. Yeah. Just not this. If his vocals would have switched up on some of these, then sure. But the fact that your vocals were the same, to, it just, I don't care how much the beat switches. When your vocals are same tone, same everything, it's like, dog, this ain't it. No, this ain't it. Nah, this ain't it. Sorry, I'm, I'm halfway asleep. I darn near crashed the very first listen to this because it was putting me to sleep on the road. I'm like, dude, I'm going through country dark roads listening to you right now. I need something to keep me awake, and this is not doing it. Yeah. By the time something finally did wake me up, I was about home. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, what the heck, man? This I shop at Macy's Old Navy and Baby Gap and freaking Belk and Dillard's album that you got right now? This ain't it, boy. This is not it. Okay, now you got your bag. Okay, you're gonna hear this in freaking retail land all over the place. Fine with me, totally cool. You know what I'm saying? But nah, dog, I can't. I can't. Certified Lover Boy, definitely. I was totally cool. I was liking both albums. Donda, Certified Lover Boy, they were both cool. I'm like, all right, I rock with this. Scorpion, I didn't mind it. Do I say I loved it? No, I didn't mind it. I was like, all right, cool. Side A, side B. Whatever side you like, cool. Not bad. But this right here, though, no matter what bag you're going for, I'm hearing, oh, he did this for his international fans. Except for the fact that I've heard some international fans even bragging on it. But you know, hey, sure. I guess. Why not? Let's roll with it. For the international fans. He's in his different bag. And then you got the specs of the world saying that this album is going to literally trailblaze and cause other rappers to do exactly an album like this. Yo, I pray to God that doesn't happen. I I didn't know I didn't know the intro had finished. 
I was on track three. I'm like, well, how long is this intro? <laughs> <laughs> like I swear on everything. I thought I was on the same track, man. I I thought the same thing. Very monotone. It was a same. It sounded the exact same for the longest time. The mm-hmm. longest time. I, it was just like, uh, when are we at the fun part yet? Here, coming here. off Certified Lover Boy, this is not what I expected. Not fair point. enough, there. Fair, very fair enough statement. Um, I'm not mad at you for that statement, sir. Uh, I get it. And Janine, trust me, I totally, totally understand your your fandom here and and really supporting this album. Because again, you and I both know we listen to a lot of things, okay? We're not just hip hop fans. We listen to everything, right? I just can't say that I'm rocking with this though. When you only got two songs doing it for me, I just, I can't. I can't, it, it, it's got, if it doesn't give me replay vibes the first time around, and even if I try to give it a second go and I'm still not getting replay vibes, I can't. I can replay Certified Love Boy. I can go listen to that on the way home now. Cool, still a dope one. But this, I ain't get my Memphis Drake. I ain't get my, my pop style Drake. I ain't get none of that. I got this house Drake, I guess. I, I I would have been okay with reggae Drake on this one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, reggae Drake from one of my favorite projects. Views. All right. I Look, couldn't stand it. I, I I can't stand reggae Drake, but I would have preferred it on this album to give me a, a, a some some variety, so to speak. It did sound monotone. So. Before I actually get y'all to like uh, compare this to previous projects here, as far as what you're putting it above and what you're not, because we we ain't got to rank it one to whatever. He's got a lot of projects, so I'll just you know just name projects and you tell me if you're putting this over it or under it, whatever the case may be. But before we do that, guys, seriously, what are y'all ranking? this exact project in this exact moment right now because you know more are coming so right now in this moment what are you ranking like what what is your actual rating for this we're doing like one out of five oxes for just the project like stand, standing alone why not we'll stick with the past ox vibes you know we'll go with the we'll go with the sister vibes like this is a plugged in so yeah one out of five oxes what is this for you right now Y'all are going to shoot me, but um, I give it five oxes. I love it. I, like, when I tell you, I, I've only been listening to it, and I've been Wu-Tanging and motherfucking, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I am in love. I love it. Do I have to give one? Here we go. <laughs> hey. I mean, if the lowest I can give it is one. Mm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going back to listen to this. I'm. I, let me put it. Let me say it differently. I might go back to listen to it just so I could see what everybody else is talking about in terms of like, did I miss something? Mm-hmm. I was wide awake though when I listened to this. I, I wasn't even. I wasn't exhausted at all. I was just <laughs> irritated because of the loss. I am not. I, like. I. I was listening to it. And my sister was listening to it in her room, right? And I asked her, I said, so, like, what'd you think? She's like, nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. I, I, I just, I, I, and, and, like, I didn't say anything about it. I was, yeah, this is, this just, this ain't it for me. So I might give it one more shot. But, I mean, the music video, too, was just kind of weird. I, 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 I don't know. Because even though like we want, he's still giving toxic Drake. Still, yes, Kristen Thomas being a part of. First of all, yeah, just the fact that he's in the music video just 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 speaks volumes to the energy, right? Yeah. The fact that he's getting married to like twenty different women. I don't know. I I I will say the music video for Falling Back made me like Falling Back more because the you're right the the intro and Falling Back first listen I was like. Eh. I'm okay. One one critique that I can appreciate that I saw, they were saying that 
beat wise and 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 what he was going for with the dance house thing is cool vocally it's not the bag that he's used to so vocally it does sound a little weird on some songs yes so i can't agree with that and that's why falling back i was like i don't know if i like this song because vocally it sounded weird mm-hmm. but once he started getting into currents and um, text go green i was like okay all right we are here but the music video made me like falling back a little bit more and that's the power of a good music video. <laughs> It'll help you appreciate a song. Is that the story of the, of the of the song itself, the music video? I think that's a, I think that's what Drake's whole energy is like. I'm in love with a bunch of different women, and it's fine. I'm not gonna be a settled down certified lover boy. I I am in love with all of you mm-hmm. for different reasons. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and that's still the 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 vibe here. And um honestly never mind. What do you wh- why do you think he he named it honestly never mind? Oh what when I could finally read the font, um you know Petty Rock. I <laughs> That took a long time to understand. I had to read the, you know how they have the 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 the, the um the name of it underneath the album. Mm-hmm. I had to read that to see what the hell it was called. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um I think I'm I'm assuming the reason for the title is because maybe it's a dual type of thing. Um maybe, you know trying to prove himself in music to be what people want him to be but then he's like never mind you know i'm just gonna do me yeah which makes sense cool Mm -hmm. um also could be because i'm the story that i i was seeing that the story that this album was was about was about rihanna is that true i don't know okay um because i'm thinking you know it, if that's the case then you know it's probably just like honestly never mind i'm falling back on whatever which kind of ties into the title of falling back whatever um that's kind of like that's kind of like, that's the only thing i can really come up those only two things i can come up with thinking about that Other, outside of that i, I have no clue <laughs> yeah. i think i agree with with the first one i think he's like, honestly like hey, never mind like I'm, I'm i'm done trying to explain shit like yeah you're either going to get with it or don't at this point which is fine i'm i'm okay with that like i said though i think you should temper expectations because when you have when you you've been around he's been around what since oh seven oh eight you've been around that long and dominant that long right people have come to know you to do something specific thing rap and sing this was all singing featuring rap and that's fine but i think if you're going to drop a project you should just like uh, when he announced it all you could have said was like this is for my house music lovers whatever you know, see you at midnight or whatever. I think everybody would be like, okay, this is not what we what we've come to know Drake to be. Again, that's why that's why I've said continuously, he is an artist. That's why I don't I don't put him into this box of rap because and I don't judge his music based off of rap because he's not a rapper. He's just a, he's just an artist that can rap. We don't consider Chris Brown a rapper. He can rap. We don't consider Trey Songz a rapper. He can rap. You see what I'm saying? It, 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 they're artists. Let them be artists. I'm fine with that. You're not going to feel the same way over and over again. You just have to temper expectations. Because then he came out and said, you know, you guys will catch up one day, you know, you know, or whatever. And apparently he's coming out with another album. Hopefully that's all rap with one track that's singing to balance things out <laughs> maybe 
Maybe we can get that. Oh, you know? We can get something completely revolutionary and totally uh, outside of the box. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. I'm, I, I'm fine with him doing his own thing. I like that. I, it's, it's cool when you, see, you, you can see artists being their like being themselves authentically themselves i love that i'm perfectly fine with that just don't you know i, I <laughs> you can't get mad at, at the at the reception of the album when we know what you what you usually do and you don't do that <laughs> you know again that's again like i said earlier that's like beyonce dropping a, a country album that's like that's like jay-z dropping an r&b album i don't want to hear that oh Lord. you see what i'm saying <laughs> don't want to hear that i still feel like those are different because like 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 drake has hinted at this side of drake. what are we calling this house drake he's hinted at house drake in 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 views and and in different albums so it's like it's not a total su- surprise but Jay Z, who's never saying ever, if he did that, it'd be like, what, like Jay Z, what, why, what, huh? Like it really would be mind boggling. Yeah. I don't know. We we can agree to disagree on on this one. I love it. Five Oscars. I stand. I stand on it. I said what I said. Love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right, for me. I'm perfectly fine man. with it. Yeah, I love it. You stand by your decision, girl. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I'm not even like a diehard Drake fan to where I want to like die on 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 a hill for Drake. That's why me being so passionate about this is so weird. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't even do this. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. care that much. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it's just to hear people be like, oh, it's terrible. I'm like, but how could you? It's beautiful. See, but not everybody's into that genre of music, too. I think that that's the thing, Excuse too. Me. Like, if you're not even a, a, even like a casual listener of house or of dance or EDM or whatever dance genre this is, you're not going to like this album at all, period, because it's yeah. not what you're into. Yeah. So then to judge it so harshly, it's like, well, this one wasn't for you. Yeah. And like this like, this one wasn't for me just like views yeah. scorpion <laughs> and more life weren't for me and i'm perfectly fine with that <laughs> perfectly fine with it goodness yeah i like it i rock with it that so, that is um, five oxes Derek gave it one ox Dwayne's giving it how many oxes this man gonna say one but it's fine i don't know I'm going to give this thing about mm, 2.55555 because of the fact that I just so happen to like two songs off of this. Yeah. That's it. I have nothing else to really say. No, I'm not a Drake hater, people. I never said I was. That's what I'm tired of. When people automatically think just because you're entitled to your opinion of not liking something. You're a hater, bro. No, it's just not for me. This one ain't doing it for me. Certified lover boy, cool. Views, cool. Scorpion, kind of cool. Mm. But see, that's the and, thing. You know, I think people forget, like, you can't actually criticize people you're a fan, though. Wait, I think people forget that you can actually criticize those that you're a fan of. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's perfectly fine. You don't have to like everything that somebody puts out. Yeah. That's what art is. Art is subjective. Yep. That's Not everybody's going to like everything you do. I don't expect everybody to like what OTS does. If it ain't for you, it ain't for you. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's why that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't mean to trash Drake in any way, shape, or form. This just mm-hmm. wasn't it for me. Point and I can respect that. Like this one just wasn't for me. But when niggas is saying things with their whole chest, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I did say it was grade A booty. I I did say. I that. mean, so 
I just am by the fact this is one heck of a Macy's. I shop at Gap, Baby Gap, Old Navy, and freaking Dillard's and Belt type of albums. So, I mean, hey, I ain't mad at it. Get your bag, Drake. Get your bag. That's hey, yeah, awesome. yeah. Shoot, if I can get away with something like that, I'd do it too. I ain't gonna front. Point blank. So, real quick, on this note, I have to ask y'all, going down the list here, this out. Honestly, never mind. Definitely for Janine here, I, I must ask. All right. Are you putting this album over Take Care? Oh, no. <laughs> Are you putting this album over Views? One moment. <laughs> yeah, look at that track loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might. Really? That's a might. I might, yeah, because like one dance mm -hmm. and, con and controller. Yeah. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Hotline Bling was like my prego song though, so this is always gonna hold a special place. <laughs> I just put headphones to my stomach and listen to, hot, to Hotline Bling. Wow! <laughs> I felt her in my stomach like this. I know she was in there doing that. Yeah. So um, yeah, I I think I think I would put this over views though, because I could skip views. I I didn't skip anything on on here it was also a shorter album so it we was that out there too so yeah. and the tracks were shorter so but yeah are you putting this over if you're reading this it's too late uh ooh, mm -mm, mm -mm, i'm not <laughs> i'm not okay are you putting this over Nothing was the same. No, I'm not. I also, can we talk about this? Is different. That's like saying, What do I rank? Right? Like, what do I rank a pair more album as compared to like a Usher album? I can't because it's different. This is Drake's first, like, totally singing, totally dance album. Oh no 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 no! See, Kazo, Kazo. Here's where, here's where, here's where this 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 is this is where I'm gonna stop you right there. There's a man named Kanye West here, okay, and same amount of catalog as Drake here. And if I recall, a certain project by the name of 808s and Heartbreak was very un Kanye like yeah, to true. most people. This is true, right? There's some people still to this day that probably don't like that album, yet there are so many people who love that album. And there are people who are in between about it. Maybe they hated it at one point and they love it now. It right. aged well. So, well, uh, right. well, you know, just saying. Jude's you know? hot take was that this is Drake's 808s and Heartbreak. I heard someone else say that too. It's an interesting point to make. Yeah, I was I like, I can see that. Yeah, hmm. I see how the how the memorable hits come from this one. Aliens and Heartbreak had quite a few hits on that, so I don't know. They, they I don't know. They did. That's 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 very interesting to make that bold statement there. Okay, are you putting this over Scorpion? Yeah, and I'm putting it over More Life. Hmm. Are you putting this over certified lovable? <laughs> I don't know if it's fair to make that call yet. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. At this point in time, I don't think I would. Hmm. Care to take over from here, Brother Derek, in case I'm missing anything? Uh, what a time to be alive. The future. We can't. Take care. <laughs> Thank me later. Yeah, that's technically future shit, too. So, no, yeah. I can't. 
We know. Thank me later. Mm -hmm. Thank me later. Nah, because that's a classic. That's a classic. Yeah. That's a classic. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Mm -hmm. So, so far gone. Thank me later. Take care. Nothing was the same. These are my top four so far. All right. Yeah. And let's throw. But I don't know if I want to put honestly, <laughs> never mind, or certified lover boy in 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 top five. Huh. See, that's hard. That's tough. Not for Derek and not for me, but you know, I get it. That's not tough at all. <laughs> that's, that's not tough at that's, all. That's not tough at all. You're nah, right. Nah. Cause I think um if I'm gonna if I'm gonna rank them, nothing was the same to me as Drake's best. That's his absolute best album that he's put out. It was a it was a great balance of rap and singing. That and that that's what I think, you know, kind of I've wanted to see again from him. Just that if you're gonna do it, do it and with that with that type of balance. I'm not looking for nothing was the same part two, right? But <clears throat> excuse me, I think that balance that he had, it's been it was amazing. Um, so to me, that's his best. Uh take care. If you're reading this is too late, CLB. I might I think I might I might put that in the top four. Um, after that, what time to be alive, and then it's whatever after that for me. So far gone. That's his mixtape, right? Can we talk about mixtapes? Or are you not turned album? I guess. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I can't. I don't want to. The mixtapes to me are just that's a different lane. I, I would put them in the top two, but I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about them like that. But honestly, then never mind to me is the worst album, to me. Do you think so far gone the mixtape aged well? <sighs> because for me it did. Because when I look at this track list, like of course it's nostalgic you're just like yo like when this shit dropped it was like oh my god drake you know what i mean yeah you know what that's a great point i i'm it's nostalgic i it may maybe it didn't age well but it is very nostalgic yeah that's a great point hmm. a something great point. for a future fans discussion maybe that right there is something yeah because i mean drake drake was i feel like when drake when drake came out he was he was he was <laughs> trying to basically just be known as a rapper that's why it confuses me as to you know the switch not the switch but the evolution um uh to just doing a, a whole singing album i think I, you know what the fans drake's fans make make it very difficult to uh to, to i don't know it's like it's it's the same effect as as LeBron's fans, honestly. One could say the same about J. Cole fans, but we, we don't have to go there. That's perfectly fine. I just say what you want to say about us. We're good people. <laughs> yeah, you're great people. God damn, that man can do no wrong. Well, musically, musically, I <laughs> I every album he's put out to me is just it's up there. It's right there. It's it's. He has not, I feel like this, he has not regressed. Whenever he puts an album out, he has not regressed. To me, Drake, after uh, 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 What a Time to Be Alive, started to slightly regress. Up until Certified Lover Boy. Then it's like, oh, boom. That's, the, that's, that, that's, that, that's that step forward that I was looking for. I'm not talking about for everyone else, everyone else, but for me, that's what I was looking for. So to go from that to this, uh, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> come on. Interesting. 
Very interesting. Um, <laughs> it's so funny that y'all said that because of the fact this man said J. Cole, oh no, Cuzzo said J. Cole is a fan. J. Cole can do no wrong yet. We saw the screenshot of what this man had to say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the first time. Out. Yeah. Even your boy. Yeah, I had to say this out. That's the first time I had to disagree with J, J, with J. Cole, man. And I, that hurt. That pained me to do that. But he said that this album was phenomenal. He said that Honestly Nevermind was phenomenal. I, I, I don't so know. So I must ask you then, Mr. Derek, as a J. Cole lover and fan, um, sir, if this album is exactly what they say, and let's say this is his 808s and Heartbreak, where that was basically what set up arguably the auto tune era amongst rappers. Uh, if Yo Guy turns around and finds some kind of way to just lyrically kill straight EDM style beats on album, how are you going to feel about that based off the inspiration? You're saying if he decides to do EDM. Uh, just does his own version of this and you hear it straight. You don't get your typical, you know, boom bap style J. Cole beats that you normally would get. You yeah. get straight EDM style beats only with J. Cole lyricism. How are you going to feel? I'd have to hear it. But, but I will say at first when I heard him on um, on Bia's track, I didn't know what was going on. So I had to listen to it again. Mind you, I wasn't a fan of KOD when, it, when I first heard it. I'll be completely honest. I was not a fan of KOD when I first heard it. But I heard I listened to it again. I'm like, okay. Now I hear the 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 difference. I'm like, okay, this now okay. I I like this now. It took me two times to listen to it to 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 really get into it. So it's not it's not a hard thing for me to listen to a J. Cole project and and be like, what's going on here? And then get it the next listen. Um so yeah, if he does EDM, I'm sure that he'll flow in the pockets and it'll sound good. It'll sound real good. I I just don't know what that will sound like though. So uh, that the way like just thinking about it like that, I don't want to hear it. I don't, but I'm gonna listen. I'm I'm gonna I consume everything J Cole con every every content J Cole puts out. I, I consume, so um, I'm with it. Hmm. I'm with it. Let's see it. Interesting. All right, Mister Jermaine Cole. We shall see what happens in the next two or three years or so. Whenever you decide to put something else out, full project wise of your own. You know what I'm saying? Not compilations. No, no. Yeah, actual full length project uh, post the off season. And then that comes back around. It'll be interesting to see what you decide to go with. Uh, so, that being said, hey, y'all, this has been fun. It's been a dope discussion. I mean, I'm loving the, uh, you know, hot and cold method here amongst you two. Split down the middle, agreeing to disagree. We have Janine representing the ladies. You know, because we know the ladies love this album. Most of them. I haven't heard any ladies say this album was trash. I don't That's know about you. That's a good point. I haven't heard I'm any just woman saying. say that. I've only heard the fellas say it. I haven't heard it. Oh, see, as she says. Is it, is it the braids? No, not at all. The braids is retarded. But <laughs> I did see a meme that said this album is for guys that take fine women on trips, not niggas that walk in the club like where's on uh, where's the hoes at and i feel that well i'm I, listen i've done neither one so <laughs> where do i stand <laughs> likewise I, I was <laughs> a club that i haven't taken a woman out like that to let's say in a perfect world covid free o, o, ots catalina wine mixer on a boat on a nice summer day i would hey. love to see what what the response would be i'm not dancing to it a I bunch of that. pretty ladies in bathing suits and or sun dr dresses because we know that y'all like those dancing to this drake song a couple of bottles of champagne because you got to it's it's champagne poppy a 
a couple hookahs. There may or may not be blunts in the air. There may or may not be. You know what I'm saying? I'm just wondering what the take from the album would be if the setting was right. And maybe it shouldn't take all these different factors to to make an album good for you. Yeah, you're you're throwing beautiful women in sundresses on a boat with with champagne. Of course, that's going to be a great environment. Sometimes you. (laughs) to set the vibe that's why y'all like having us around maybe maybe it'll give you a different view on 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 the album see what you did there Mm. heavily very heavily we'll see and we'll see we'll have an ots boat boats and hoes oh yes sir we're not saying you actually got to be a hoe you know what i mean like we're just saying yeah Hoes are not gender specific at all. <laughs> Boom. There it is. Man, <laughs> y'all have made every bit of this like I have missed y'all so much. Miss y'all too, like, man. This, yeah. this 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 has been heavily needed in yes. so many ways with all the running around and personal stuff we've had going on in good ways. Now, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things where this is what you miss. And uh, fans, listeners, y'all, thank y'all so much. I mean, we're definitely going to keep these coming for y'all, okay? Make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube already. Hit the notification bells. We got some plug-ins coming for y'all in the future, all that good stuff. Tons of fun, fun stuff, Um, you know? And yeah, y'all just make sure y'all keep a lot. Make sure you're interacting with us. Uh, If you're a new listener, hey, appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. I hope we didn't disappoint any of y'all or make any of y'all mad if y'all hardcore Drake fans out there. But I mean, hey, uh, make sure you subscribe, leave your comments, you know what I'm saying? Definitely give a five-star rating if you're on Apple Podcasts because the more people get five-star ratings, the more new listeners get onto this very show. So again, we appreciate you for telling a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. Come check out these guys and girls at Past the Eyes and this OTS Media Co. brand full of shows, you know what I'm saying? So we greatly appreciate y'all. So grateful for all of y'all. Um, before we uh, dismiss this thing, man, I'm gonna bring a quick story time into this into this thing to close out the show, you know, cause everybody likes a story time segment. So let's get into story time, ladies and gentlemen. How about that? It was the day of June 10th, 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, the official and final stop of the Digital Roses Don't Die tour from the one man they call from the south side of the moon himself, Mr. Meridian Mississippi, AKA Big Crizzle, Big Crib, forever in a day all day, you know what I'm saying? First time I got to actually experience and see my guy in concert. Granted, I really wanted to see him back in 2019, didn't get around to it because I slacked off like I shouldn't have done. And was just like, yeah, not going to let that happen again. I'm definitely catching my guy. Don't care. I wanted the VIP route where I could actually meet him, but I didn't get a chance to get into all that just yet. So I just settled for the floor general admission. You know what I'm saying? Where I got to stand on the floor, be out there on the floor in the crowd. Boy, was this amazing. Tabernacle was where this was all hosted. Sold out Tabernacle. Need our minds. And my boy sold out the city of Atlanta, where it was uh, very, very fun. You had people all up in the balconies, and you had it crazy right there on the general admission floor. So, you know, we pull in. First thing you got got to do, go in there and get the merch. So, you know, I had to support my guy and get my merch. You know, I personally wanted a shirt that had his face on it, but unfortunately, I didn't have any left in my size, so I had to get the tour shirt, which, you know, my girl was with me and was like, hey, you know, the tour shirts are actually better anyway, personally, because they have the dates of where they've been on the back. They're very good and collectible. Fair enough. Makes sense. I got a J. Cole shirt from, you know, seeing that guy, too. So, you know, <laughs> that makes sense to get the tour shirt. But I will get a shirt with my boy's face on it, rocking that on here as well pretty, pretty soon. Nonetheless, um, yeah. Everything was smooth. Shout out to his merch team. I mean, they had that thing, you know, long line. It was going very, very smoothly. You know what I'm saying? Just the time to catch, you know, I didn't really get to catch the opening acts, y'all, unfortunately, because uh, I kind of had a show myself that day. So I didn't know it was that day. 
I thought it was actually the previous, the, the next day, but it was like, oh, it's on a Friday. So kind of had to like miss most of the opening acts, but they did have screens out there where I saw uh, one of the artists out there doing his thing before Crit got up. Uh, so, you know, we're walking around through the venue, you know, we get there, you know, of course, I wanted to get there early personally, so I could get like right front row and center. Yeah, that didn't get to happen either, unfortunately, due to me having a show, guys, unfortunately. But hey, when you're general admission and you're right there on the floor, you still got brace. I wasn't going to be on the balcony. I know. I mean, hey, look, if you're the kind of person that likes to watch stuff from up high, that's cool. Been there, done that. I ain't a fan of the up high view. I like to be up close and personal, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Down on the flow level where you're standing up with everybody. Shout out to everybody in the crowd, you know, rocking with Crizzle. You know what I'm saying? Tow up the city of ATL. You know what I'm saying? You had blunts rolling. You had cigars rolled. You had drinks. Everybody was in there having a situation. You know what I'm saying? You got a little bit of everything. Uh, so, of course, you know, my lady was with me. Now, Here's the funny thing about this story, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, when you have a girl that is five foot two <laughs> and you have to get through a crowd where there's a lot of tall adults, including myself, and you're saying to yourself, hmm, now I go straight to the, you know, I get our little stamp, we go in, I go straight to the side of the stage and I'm like, all right, this seems like a good view where she can see, I can see, I can, you know, let's just make this work. Security's right there. It's like, yeah, nah, you can't stand here. Anywhere past this black spot here, yeah, you can't be standing here. Oh, great. So what am I supposed to do? I mean, you know, they're not assigned seats. You just pay the general mission and you stand. I'm like, well, how am I going to do this? Guess I got a big boy. You know, I don't usually like to use my muscle too much, but I was like, well, guess I'm going to just be like, excuse me. So I just grab her by the hand and just bowls through people as much as I can. Politely, of course, but nonetheless, you know, just like, hey, hey, come on through. Finally, found a nice little spot that was good enough for her where it was perfect, you know, like kind of mid, you know, weren't way in the back, like nice middle section ish, you know what I mean? And she could see, you know what I'm saying? So, of course, you know, she is very unfamiliar with creating. Your boy had a mission accomplished in being basically bringing her over here to the Motai to the sundown forever in a day click you know what i'm saying got her as a big crit fan she went in kind of doing a little research but he has so much material that she was like gosh he's got a lot of songs i'm like yes he is he's been doing this a mighty long time coming from the era of the j coles and the kendricks and the drakes and wiz khalifas and big shots when you come from that class of course you're gonna have a lot of music that's how that works but she walked away being a real sincere fan of this very guy because he came through and tore the freaking house down as I expected. Did every single song that I expected and hoped to hear, including the very first song, Time Machine, that actually discovered me into Big Crit. So I was very excited to hear Time Machine because I was like, geez, that's the song that helped me discover who this guy was and I've been hooked ever since. Nonetheless, set was great, amazing, phenomenal. City was hype, every song had him hype. And then, you know what I'm saying, even in the mellow moment, still killing it. Now, this is where it gets interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Towards the end of the show, right, pretty much Crit does his set, phenomenal as usual. It gets to the point where, you know, as, as he got to the final song and did his thing for like 30 straight minutes, because, you know, Atlanta was the final stop. So Crit just decided to have a family reunion because he was like, you know, Atlanta, y'all show me love all the time. The South does in general, but... Something about Atlanta, you can just tell they love Crizzle out here, man. You know, gave my guy a whole mural out there on the west side. And, you know, phew, you know, he right there front row and center. Sold out show, right? So this guy, you know, brings out his family, friends, you know, people who were in attendance, you know what I'm saying? They all on the stage, crowd out, packed out. And for 30 straight minutes, we out there just vibing. Some of it was crit songs that he didn't really get to perform. He just started playing them and the crowd went crazy. Then all of a sudden, he brings out a surprise guest. 
somebody that influenced him and inspired him to do music, ladies and gentlemen. Now, who might that be? Well, that would be another former Mississippi native, somebody by the name of Mr. David Banner, ladies and gentlemen, comes out to the stage and they start performing and vibing and chilling, doing some songs they got together. And of course, David Banner flexed his muscle, playing the T.I. rubber band man, saying, hey, y'all, y'all know I made the beat to this, right? Just trying to remind y'all in a humble flex way, this man been producing, been doing it while still having his own hits at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Just saying. We did a whole list swag surfing that beat because you know you can't do Atlanta without a swag surf. We had the whole tabernacle swag surfing in this mug. Uh, funny note, though, is that uh, Miss Nikki uh, kind of caught a contact high if you will, because again, when you're five foot two, <laughs> you're kind of in the midst of all the weed that's going on in the vicinity. So she admitted to me and was like, yeah, I think I kind of caught me a contact high because I was kind of floating during the show. I was like, oh, were you? I was too busy just vibing and recording. So I'm just like, well, hey, I, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> so I guess she caught us on, you know, a little contact high in the process of this concert. Um, but real talk, man, Crit was so sincere with us, was keeping it real, um, and it was really dope. But the best part of this show, before I let it go, just to wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen, I'm vibing in this last 30 minutes, like when it was like a real family reunion, like Crit was saying, like, I ain't seen a lot of y'all since 2019. You're thinking, dang, it was like a whole pandemic, my guy. Crazy, right? Man, we performing, he doing his thing, whole mob crowd of people on the stage. And then next thing I know, y'all, I just happened to turn around. I looked to the side, to my left. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where this came about, but ladies and gentlemen, David Banner was right next to me and right directly behind in Nikki. Hype as all get out. Just, I don't know, he was. It was, a, it was a big crit song playing. This man somehow must have jumped in the crowd. I didn't see it. I didn't know how, when, what. White beater, six foot two, big and swole, right behind little five foot two and Nikki. I turned around, I was like, oh snap. David Banner's like right here in front of me, right here behind her. What the heck? And I couldn't grab my phone out of time to capture the moment when he was right there, but I did kind of follow him a little bit when he kind of went further into the crowd, toward the front, and did a whole mosh pit, got on some dude's shoulders and just kept going in like that. Got pictures and videos of that and the whole concert. Fortunately, I couldn't just capture the moment when David Benner was like right there in my face, y'all, and right there with Nikki. But hey, nonetheless, I will say this was definitely one memorable experience. And hell, I can also say, I can check off, off this 2010 class list. I can check off J. Cole. I can check off Big Crit. I can check off Big Sean, because, yeah, that was a college one. Um, shoot, only people left to really see would be Wiz Khalifa, Nicki Minaj, if she ever decides to do shows again. And, uh, oh, yeah, the guy we just talked about. Mr. Honestly, never mind, but I ain't, I ain't trying to go if he going on tour for that album. Nah, heck no. Nah. You can have that, brother. No, you can have that. <laughs> I'm good on that one. Give me, give me some, give me some honestly. Never mind. give me some some take care. <laughs> if you're reading this, it's too late. I don't know any of them drinks. Just not this one. But hey, guys, that's my experience. I just want to say I had to share that story time with y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And uh yeah. that was my experience seeing my very favorite rapper for the very first time. And ladies and gentlemen, it won't be the last because we bark my words. He will have another project coming at some point. And believe me, when he tours again, I'm getting the VIP that time. I'm going to meet my boys. Y'all going to see exclusive pictures and videos and all that. That being said, y'all, hey, that was my experience going to see Big Crit on June 10th, closing out the land. Nice. So that. A fun-ass time. Yeah. It really was. It yeah. really was. Like, Especially the contact tie part. Yeah. <laughs> what do you expect? You know, in a room full of people lighting yeah. one up, you know what I'm saying? It's big prison. You're not going to not light one up. And, you know? She was definitely going to catch a contact. Oh, for sure. Mm, oh, yeah. It was all over. But hey, that being said, guys, uh, hey, thank y'all again so much for just riding with us, tuning in with us, man. We had a fun time, fun show. 
We'll be back with more for sure. Uh, but Mr. Derek, this is the part where I turn it to you to tell the people where they can find and follow everything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, you can follow all of us uh, at OTS Media Co. All social media platforms. We're now on TikTok. Still don't know what the hell I'm doing with it. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But every other place, you know, please definitely follow us. Um, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, that means you're on our channel. So if you have not done so yet, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Uh, get you know get a notification whenever we drop something else new we have all these other shows on here you guys will definitely love uh so please take it take a chance and 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 uh you know check that out uh let us know what you guys think give us some feedback we'd love to know what you guys want to hear you know discuss uh so you know we 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 value your opinion so please do that um rate review on any podcast platform you're listening on as well uh help us rank up and uh you know we, we thank you guys for that and uh I guess we'll catch you guys next time whenever that is it's gonna be next week or you know uh, stay we're, tuned we're, we're hoping <laughs> we're hoping okay we're definitely hoping we want to give you guys the consistency <laughs> we love you guys and we know you're like yo we need this on a regular basis but it's summertime people in their trip bag you know what i'm saying people doing all kind of festivals just it's a lot going on y'all it's the summer what you expect but we hey we still got a brand we still got things to put out. So we're going to do it. All right. Back off of what Derek said really, really quickly. Um, of course, follow us on, on everything and on IG, uh, PTA underscore OTS every Monday. Oh. We're staying consistent. Every Monday, yeah. Music Mondays, we're posting what is in our ears, essentially. And a critique that I got was that, oh, like I, like I want to be put on to new things, but what it's called is what's in our ears. And sometimes that's new stuff and sometimes that's classics but we would really like to get the engagement up so um tell us what you're listening to like put us on to something if you feel like there's some underground stuff that's out or just something that we may not have heard yet um screen screenshot it tag us so that we can share it with our followers that'd be great yeah yeah because what's in our ears can be everyone not yeah. just not just us <laughs> Oh yeah, it's everybody. So, yeah, it's everybody. let us know what you guys want to, what you guys listen to. Yeah, please. Absolutely, there is no judgment on what everybody has in their ears. Again, we are always open, whether it's our taste or not. It's everything that is in y'all ears. That is the beauty of music. Okay, um, always, man, always, always, always. Make sure you follow the brand. Uh, you know, make sure you follow. What did I think about this week, man? You know what I'm saying? The book club people, oh, you know, yeah. I know we switching it over real rocking. quick on a book club, you know, rocking it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ladies, especially, you know, they meet if you live in the local Atlanta area, make sure you follow. What did I think about this week? Link up with Miss Janine. She'll get you in on the books that's being discussed and you can catch some dope brunches in the process. Maybe we'll get a music version of that at some point. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? Let's get an album to discuss. And, and you know that's brunch been on my mind, right? You know? I'm down for a PTA um, brunch. I'm, I'm totally down. Let's do just it. Just saying. You know what I'm saying? Just saying. Just saying. You know, but hey, you know, that being said, good people, as always, all good things must come to an end. And as always, we thank you so, so much for rocking with us here on Pass the Ox. Make sure you are following all things at PTA underscore OTS. Make sure you follow and subscribe and hit the notification bell to all things at OTS Media Co. on the YouTube page, of course. But with that said, this is your fellow broadcast announcer, Dwayne Winifred Dickey III. And of course, joined with you by Miss Janine, oh so loving Barry, you know, we're going to put that up there just a little bit. And of course, Mr. Derek Myers Jr. the third. Okay, that being said, until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Passing the Ox, and the Ox has officially been passed to you. Until the next time, sincere vibes. <laughs>